Good morning and welcome to the Gardening with Gil video series. We're in the first half of June 2020. I'm your host Will Redfern and in front of me is Gil Gillespie. Give us a wave Gil. We're both Norfolk Master Gardeners. Gil has been growing vegetables for decades since he was a little boy growing up on a farm in Virginia. You may also know him from Gardens in a Flower Pot where he worked for almost 30 years. So Gil knows a lot about growing vegetables. We are filming this series with the intent of showing residents of Norfolk useful tips in planning, planting, and maintaining their vegetable gardens, especially in times like these when growing your own food is an attractive alternative to buying it in the store. And we're planning to discuss one video, uh, one vegetable per video. Today we're in Gil's lovely garden. Gil, what do we got today? Today we're going to do corn and we're going to do companion planting with corn and winter squash. And so we'll start with our corn. Talk a little bit about corn. There's usually two types of corn that we're familiar with. One is called the dent corn, which is grown for animal feed and commercial use. And the next kind that we normally use is sweet corn, and that's the one that's planted for human consumption. So today we're going to be planting sweet corn. The sweet corn, is, you see the color on this. It's got a fungicide on it because of the sugar content. The sweet corn has twice to three times as much sugar content as the field corn or the dent corn. So therefore, if it's been in cold soil, it will mold. So they put some fungicide on it to stop the molding. So today we're going to plant this, okay? So first of all, I'm going to lay off my rose. So Gil, is that why it's red? There's, the there's red some... is for, yeah, it's not edible. And I'm wearing my gloves today because I'm going to be handling the fungicide and the fertilizer. So we're going to lay off the rows for my corn. The corn gets planted like one inch deep. We'll lay off the rows. We'll put our organic, our organic fertilizer in here. But corn is a heavy feeder. In other words, it takes a lot of food to make that corn produce quickly. So we'll put the corn the fertilizer in, the organic fertilizers, and we'll give it just a little brush right like this. And then we're going to plant the seeds. And this, by the way, these corn seeds are like two years old, so I'm going to put them a little thicker because of the germination rate. But normally we'd be planting either like three to four inches apart. But today we're going to put them just a little bit thicker because some of them are not going to germinate. So I'll have plenty. I'll thin them out to about five inches apart once they come up. And to do our covering for the inch, and we're going to leave the middle for the water, so we, we fill from the inside out. One inch layer of dirt on top, One right? One inch layer of dirt on top, and then we always do my love packs, which compresses the soil against the seeds, so that they make good contact. And there we have the corn planted. And now we will go to our companion planting. And we have the water trench in the middle for the catch the water. Now we're gonna do the uh, companion planting, which is the winter squash. This is the butternut squash, as you can see here. And when I'll talk about it while I have it in my hand, this is a winter squash. This is grown during the summer on the vines. We leave the vines until around September, October, until the vines start to die. And then the squash should be nice and orange. There's, they start out green, and when they turn nice and orange and hard, then they're ready to harvest. To harvest them, it's very important that you do not take this off the fruit. You cut this off the vine. At the vine area, you cut that off the vine. If that's staying on there, then this will keep. This is year old. This is last year's growth. Wow. Still edible and good. So Gil, if they're growing in the summer, why are they called winter squash? because they keep through the winter and they will keep if you leave the little ends on. If you knock that little end off, it'll make a sore, it'll make a weep, it'll weep and it mold. So that's why it's important to leave the little, little ends on all your winter squashes that you're keeping. This has to do with your pumpkins and your other squashes. So now we're gonna put the heel in a gill's heel, which we will stir up around here. Well, Another gill's heel. And this is where, this is where I planted a pot 
as we demonstrated in another plenty and I have some already planted through here that you can see and we'll put our seeds in here I usually put five seeds in and when when they come up I'll thin it to three we plant them about three quarters of an inch or an inch deep but push it into the first knuckle and then we'll cover them up like this cover them good press it to the soil and then make a make my heel of course from my water retention circle I make my around here okay and now to do the watering for these I'll demonstrate There it is, yep. Well, we'll do the watering that we normally do with my heels. And when the water is only on the top. Runs over to just a little bit around the edges of it. Now the it's planted, and without watering and watering that deep, I probably won't have to water that at least for two to three weeks. If it, if it rains, you don't water it at all. Maybe every week I check them to see, and then I put water just in the pot. I don't spray the plants because that'll create mold on the plants if they wet. So you just water in the pot. Molding and on your leaves are the big spots. And that's companion planting. We got our corn and our winter squash planting. Super. Thank you, Gil.